So in the last episode, you learned that a function f of x is differentiable at a given point r if and only there exists a unique tangent at point r. Or in other words, f of x is said to be differentiable at the point r if and only the curve doesn't have r as a corner point. And now let's try to understand this with one more practical example. And now let's try to understand with the help of one important example. Now suppose f of x is equal to modulus x and remember the function modulus x is not differentiable at x equal to 0. And why is it so? And for that let's draw the graph of the function modulus x. So you can see from the graph and to the right hand side of the point O we have y as equal to x. So it's a straight line and towards the left hand side of origin we have y equal to minus x. Again it is a straight line and both the lines intersect at origin. And also remember in the previous episodes on continuity you already learned that the function modulus x is a continuous function or in other words there is no break or hole or any jump in the graph of the function modulus x. But the given function modulus x is not differentiable at the point 0 or at the origin. The reason being, here you can see at the left hand side of the given graph where the function y is defined as y equal to minus x, the slope of the curve is equal to minus 1. And on the right hand side, the graph, the function is defined as y equal to x and here the slope is equal to 1. So that means slope of the function at the left hand side is not equal to the slope of the function at the right hand side. Or in other words there is no limiting position of the codes which we can draw at the origin at the left hand side and the right hand side. So from this example it's clear that although the function modulus x is a continuous function but it is not differentiable at the point 0 or at the origin. Which also means a continuous function is not necessarily a differentiable function. So that also means that a function may be continuous at a point may not be differentiable at that point. Now let's discuss an important theorem about differentiability of functions and as per this theorem if a function is differentiable at a point then it is necessarily continuous at that point but the converse of this theorem is not necessarily true and this theorem can be also described as if f of x is differentiable at x equal to c then that means f of x is continuous at the point x equal to c. And now to prove this theorem I suppose f of x is a function which is differentiable at x equal to c and now because f of x is differentiable at x equal to c then that means at the point c its limit exists or in other words you can also say limit x approaches c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c has got a definite value and this value is also called as its differential coefficient or f dash c. So we can also write limit x approaches c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c is equal to f dash c. And also remember from the properties of continuous function which you have learned in the previous episodes, you know it very well that a function is said to be continuous at a point x equal to c if and only the limit x approaches c f of x 
is equal to f of c. And now let's use a trick to prove this theorem. And here f of x can be also written as f of x minus f of c plus f of c. So the limit x approaches f of x can be also written as limit x approaches c f of x minus f of c plus f of c. And now for the expression f of x minus f of c, if we multiply both numerator and the denominator by x minus c, then this limit can be also written as limit x approaches c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c into x minus c plus f of c. And now what's the value of limit x approaches c x minus c? Now when x approaches c then x minus c will, will be nearly equal to 0. So this limit finally becomes limit x approaches c and limit x approaches c f x minus f c upon x minus c is equal to the differential coefficient at point c or f dash c. So this equation can be also written as limit x approaches c f of x is equal to f dash c into 0 plus f of c and which finally becomes 0 plus f of c and which is equal to f of c. So now we have proved that limit x approaches c f of x is equal to f of c and that is the main required condition for a function to be continuous at at given point. So that means the given function f of x is continuous at x equal to c. So now it's clear that if a function is differentiable at a point then it is necessarily continuous at that point. And now let's check whether the converse of this theorem is also true or in other words if a function is continuous at a point then it is also differentiable. And remember we have just discussed that the modulus function or the function f of x is equal to modulus x although the function was continuous function but it was not differentiable at the point x equal to 0. So which clearly means that a function might be continuous at a point but it is not necessarily differentiable at that point and that means the converse of this theorem is not true or a function may be continuous at a point but it is not necessarily differentiable at that point.